Welcome to the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, where there's always another secret. Welcome back, everybody, to episode 34 of the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies. Today is the 24th of June, 2019, and in this episode, we are going to continue our exploration of Taldane, discussing volume two of the Cosmere graphic novel, White Sand. I'm Bill, and I'm joined, as always, by my sand-riddled co-hosts, Amy and Jordan. Welcome, guys. <laughs> oh, I hate sand. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. It's everywhere. Don't even start, Jordan. <laughs> You're the one who said I was riddled with it. Yes. <laughs> that doesn't mean to... <sighs> My children actually I... did play in sand recently, but I didn't. But your home is probably sand, sand riddled No, now. thankfully not. Thankfully not. <laughs> it probably is. It gets everywhere. It's just mm. furry instead. Uh, well, for those of you who listen to the podcast recordings, watch the videos on YouTube and basically aren't here live, you should be here live. Because then you can interact with us, and especially in these opening segments, there's a lot of fun interaction with uh, with viewers sometimes. So if you want to join in the live stream, come to www.twitch.tv slash innkeepers table. We record episodes of the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies every other Monday night, starting at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern. Join us. Have fun. Be a part of it. Make the magic happen. And watch our sound test. It's fun. It's kind of fun. <laughs> uh, how are y'all doing, guys? What's up in your lives? I'm getting, like, nothing done because it's summer and children always around. But, you know, that's life. I have gophers. By I'm extension, sorry. I, too, have gophers. <laughs> but you're not as concerned? Not as concerned, no. Cause he doesn't have to pay to get rid of said gophers. It's true. <laughs> That's uh, yeah. that represents my investment in this. Indeed. Indeed, indeed. Mm. Now, just as a reminder, if you want to, get, we're, we're going to be studying or studying. We're going to be talking about White Sand Volume 2 today. And if you want to actually get the prose version of White Sand, which was Brandon's first and eighth, and it would be the eighth book version that you would be getting, Go to his website and sign up for his newsletter. It's at brandonsanderson.com slash newsletter dash sign up. And in the confirmation letter you get after you. So, okay, there will be a confirmation letter. You click confirm and then you get a, another confirmation letter. It'll be in that where the link is to get download the prose version. So you can read that and see because we kind of talked about this last time. The graphic novel is all right, but it loses something. Mm, I still have to read the prose one. And so there, you know, it's one of Brandon's earlier work, so it is still a little bit rough around the edges. But I think a lot of the bigger problem is just the graphic novel loses a little bit of the Brandon mm -hmm. Sanderson secret sauce. So, yeah, there, there's a is it Elliot. Oh, goodness. I'm going to say that wrong. Elliot L. They're they're saying that they lose they lose track of what's going on in the fights and it is a little yeah. hard sometimes. Yeah. Um, and just so you know, if you have already signed up for Brandon's uh, mailing list and you don't know where the link is or you did it before they were giving away the link, sign up again, like with the even with the same email address, and I think you'll get the confirmation email again. Somebody told me that I haven't validated it for myself, but I believe that is the case. So, mm -hmm. um, so let's just go ahead and dive in. Where so where were we at the end of volume one? Um, what was going on? So Chris is trying to find go to the the DM of the Sandmasters, right? Mm -hmm. And right. then she finds out that it's actually Kenton, and she's rather angry with him. <laughs> and that's where it cuts off is right there. Exactly. Which she is where this up, one she's... starts is 
It's, it does that first line again. She's like, you are got to be kidding. I can't remember the exact line, but she's you like. You lied to me. <laughs> you liar. And of course, she, Kitten didn't lie to her technically because yeah. he said he was no one of consequence. And when she met him, he was no one of consequence. He was mm-hmm. just. One I do of the find few survivors. It, he was a dude. <laughs> I, I, I do find it kind of funny that, you know, she keeps saying she's looking for the sand mages and. He says, I'm like, not one of those. Well, he has no idea what a mage is. It's so, yeah, because he's, like, he's speaking a second language. And mm-hmm. and it sounds like he's fluent. But if you don't really use a certain word, then you're not going to know what it means. And he doesn't. sounds like in his culture, they don't really have the concept of magic like hers does. Right. Like hers looks at it as being something mystical and <clears throat> like how we see magic. Mm-hmm. But he looks at it as it's sand mastery and it's the use of sand and everything so he doesn't connect it with the same way well and it's kind of interesting because she's a scientist about it and Mm -hmm. it's interesting where she suddenly at first she's just like we're all the strings and stuff but then yeah as soon as she accepts it that this is a thing she immediately starts trying to science it which Uh is the strength Mm -hmm. of all of brandon's magic systems Mm -hmm. is how he lets you just sort of play it play in the sandbox where it's just this is just the the rules (laughs) of the world and so it's not really magic it's just mm-hmm. another science because it's just the rules of life well it's the whole concept of any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic it's just the contrapositive mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. what it, it's the it's the opposite any sufficiently studied magic is indistinguishable from science i mean it, it's essentially that's how brandon's magic systems work yeah. is they are sciences they're like biological science I don't know. That made more sense in my head. Investiturial science. Yeah. Organic. I was I was looking more for organic and anyway. totally a thing. Hashtag <laughs> investiturial science. It's going to be a thing. You got to write that out. I don't want to spill it. <laughs> no. You from now on you have to put that in every single social media post. Sandra Hashtag Sonia investiturial. Happening. investiturial. <laughs> going to be that, that, is <laughs> that'll be one of the sub departments of the sandersonian institute is is the investiturial sciences department so and they have to figure out how things are spelled <laughs> <laughs> it's such a long word uh, anyway. oh we're mm. dorks anyway yeah. what are you talking about <laughs> this is the cool stuff this is what the people tune in for <laughs> so uh, yes so she's she's unhappy with him and he goes up again and she storms off right yep Oh man! As she is wont to do. Yeah, yeah, she does yeah. that. Okay, so so I cannot pronounce her name. Is it Ice Ace? I I, I say Aes, but I don't know if that's right. I'm, I say I'm Ice. Tempted, I'm almost tempted pr- to pronounce her name Ash because that's how you say Ashlyn in in or spell Ashlyn in Irish. It's A I S L I N G is Ashlyn. I go with AS, but I don't know if that. I think that's the Japanese that I took that makes me go, well, if I don't want to say it, I do it the Japanese ish way. Plus, so, plus if we say Ash, then it's the third character that Brandon is named <laughs> Ash in the Cosmere. <laughs> oh, that is. I did notice it actually this time. Texas Blade makes the comment that with the, the languages, that there's uh-huh. a slight difference in color. And I saw yeah. it more with this one than with the first one. Yeah, the I, I was problem. looking it's a for a slight difference in color. That, mm-hmm. That's the thing, is it's. it's eggshell versus white and it's just like <laughs> that's like saying it's plum rather than purple you know <laughs> couldn't see couldn't we just go with like the colors you see on like a notepad like yellow versus white yeah like a pastel yellow or a pastel blue pastel or a green. pastel green yeah exactly there, there's a lot that, of options it turns out there's a lot of colors they exist mm-hmm. and <laughs> i wish we would have chosen any of them yep Warbreaker is a good thing Color. Maybe in the war, the maybe in the Warbreaker graphic novel, which has not been announced. <laughs> that's not an announcement. We don't know anything special, so it's, it would just be so pretty. So pretty. yeah, that's just an if they're going to do something visual. I think Warbreaker would be great for it. But mm. honestly, oh my goodness, imagine like CG if they filmed it. I just, I think my complaint is I don't think that they should do a graphic novel as the original and only version of a story for Brandon. Yeah, I feel like they could adapt something he's already published into a graphic novel. That'd be great. Like do, like do a side story or like one character's backstory or something in graphic novel version or. No, I'm thinking more just you do the story again after it's been published in prose. 
Just I, I don't want something new from Brandon in graphic novel because I again I just feel it loses something. Yeah, and I so that's just bad. that's I mean that's my opinion. Mm. But yeah, I I have basically the exact same opinion. I just don't find this story as easy to follow as his others. Yeah, like like I said last time, I lose names a lot easier because they're not said as much and. I'm trying to connect faces and then the fight scenes are trying to follow <coughs> the different things. But so, yeah. well, and no, I, I like his prose better than this, but like, for example, so uh, one, one part where I feel it really suffered was when, um, Kenton has basically challenged Dryle to a fight mm-hmm. and they're like, you idiot. He can do like 25 at a time and you've got three. And he's like, mm-hmm. okay, well let me show you this. And just trying to animate what his strategy is going to be. That might be something that can work in, say, an animated medium. Right. But mm-hmm. in the well, the frame by frame of what was going on, really, like, I couldn't quite well, tell. He has to sort, he has to sh- tell so much rather than show. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. And, it's well, still and the thing is, if you're trying to show movement in a, it, it's, it's hard enough. If you're trying to show movement for grains of sand, mm. it's even more difficult. Yeah. Especially because first off, you have a ribbon. So that already con- connotes a type of movement. But at the same time, you can have a ribbon that's stationary. Mm-hmm. And so it just gets really confusing when you start playing around with it and mixing things up. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to add more to that, but I can't just. Yeah. I was it's... glad that they finally got a different artist at the end, though. Yes. Because it's so much cleaner. That, like so, so that said, fun. okay, so I had heard that this book got a new artist, and that it was so much cleaner, and then I, I didn't realize literally in the middle of the book, and oh. so I'm, I'm like, I swear this is the exact same guy, this is the exact <laughs> same art, and then the very last chapter, it switches, I'm like, whoa, okay, this is what that everyone is was such. talking about. Uh-huh. I've never suddenly- seen a book change in the middle of it. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think there were there were issues with the uh, first artist getting things done on time. Uh, I I actually wasn't sure what the reasoning was. Did you? It would I, make sense. He draws remember, a lot more lines. I think my husband looked into it a little bit, and I should have looked okay. into it more. So if if people have heard differently, then then yeah, then let us know. But mm-hmm. I know there were some issues with how some of the characters were represented, and I think it was more in the first one, and then there was. There, he wasn't getting things done on time, or there were scheduling problems, or something like that, and so they switched. But anyway, that's that's what I remember hearing was that, and I don't remember where it was heard. Right. So. But yeah, so here's hoping that <laughs> it, you know, the third book is just consistent with. It's easier to follow. Order. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that the new artist can also make it easier to follow. I'm not trying to criticize the original mm-hmm. artist too much. He did a decent job, but it just it didn't fit. It's not. It's what, not your your it did your art style of choice. Exactly, it didn't quite fit Brandon's storytelling style mm-hmm. either. Yeah, um, I, I'm I'm just worried a Brandon story doesn't translate at all to comic books is my main concern it just i feel you lose so much and Mm -hmm. i feel like they should be if they're going to be a comic book they need to be a bigger comic book because you can there are some that that are really good but they need more time and more space because if they're going to convey something especially movement and stuff like that like i've i haven't read a ton of manga but i've read some and the ones that do well with their fight scenes show things a lot they they take the time to do it frame by frame, and so you can follow the movement better. But mm-hmm. yeah, and I don't know. It's just one of these things where I'm I'm reminded of. Uh, I want to say it was maybe writing excuses actually, where they were talking about where if you're going to use a specific medium, you have to ask mm-hmm. yourself why am I using this medium to tell this mm-hmm. story or convey this right. message, and the the example they were actually using was. Like, what does telling a story in a video game grant you that you can't get elsewhere? And they brought up the Arkham Asylum games. 
Mm-hmm. And they brought up specifically for those of you familiar with it, the scarecrow scenes where oh, sca- where it starts messing with your interface. It, and it's something mm-hmm. that you can't re- like you couldn't really do it in film. You couldn't really right. do it in any other genre than a video game. And thus it's like, oh, wow, this is amazing. Look what they're doing. It's you know, this is unique. Whereas if, you know, and so I just, it's one of these things. This well, struck me as much. Brandon did this because he was worried he would never get to the story. Mm-hmm. And so let's do this so that we can get to the story that I, well, I wasn't going to get And it to. wasn't, right. And it wasn't originally his idea to do it as a graphic novel. He was approached and asked if he had something. And he said, and that was when he thought, well, I may not ever get to this. So let's do it anyway. But it wasn't even his idea to say, Hey, let's just go make this a graphic novel. They came to him and he said, um, here's what I've got. So, mm-hmm. but you were talking about, you know, telling stories in different mediums in video games. There's a game on the GameCube, I think called eternal darkness that would mess with your inter- interface as well, mm-hmm. where like you'd be playing and suddenly a cockroach would run across the screen. Oh. Um, Or I think my favorite thing that they did is at one point, suddenly the Windows blue screen of death comes up. Because as your as your character uh, progresses in the game, they go they get madder and like they their madness meter goes up, and as it goes up, it starts messing like the volume. You'll see a volume thing, and it'll go down, and suddenly everything it messes with the player instead of the the character, and it enhances the storytelling. I feel like I, I watched a friend play a game that sounds similar to that, and I didn't mm-hmm. watch very much of it because I'm really hit and miss with liking the horror genre. Like, I like yeah. horror, but only to a certain very very specific niche of it, because otherwise I'm just like, no, it, it freaks me out too much, or it's too gross, yeah. or it's, anything it's, like it's that. It's the kind of game that, if I never actually played it myself, but if I did, I would play it with all the lights on during the day. <laughs> and then plan happy movies to watch afterwards. <laughs> Yep. Get a detox. Exactly. But back to Taldane, because yes. we're talking about completely different things. All the that was sand fault. things. Sand. So, yes. And the lots of prejudice. There's, there's tons and tons of prejudice going on, too. Like, I kept trying to figure out a good modern equivalent or something for how much it seems like a lot of the different you know, ethnicities or nationalities mm-hmm. or groups think that sand mastery is like unholy or whatever and i couldn't i couldn't Hon- think about it honestly it almost seems like a lot of the medieval attitude towards jews because a lot of them were accused of being mm. sorcerers and all, like there there was a whole lot of prejudice i mean that's brandon doesn't necessarily tie one to one cultures but that's sort of what it reminded me of yeah i i, I kept trying to pin it on something and i couldn't quite or, or possibly Romani, you know, the... Oh, yeah. Yeah, the gyp... Is that rude to say gypsies, or I don't know? I think it's considered kind of rude, but I that's don't know enough about it to yeah, say. Yeah, and that's usually what they're called in media. The Eddie Maru. The, <laughs> no, we're not talking about oh. Rothfuss right now. Wrong... You're right. <laughs> wrong, wrong book that was never going to come out. I mean, I understand that they have autographed each other's books... <laughs> but you know <laughs> I haven't read enough of his anyway <clears throat> there's okay, only two. he hasn't written enough <laughs> of his well I've only read the first one and it's been forever so you can skip yeah. about 30% of the second one <laughs> that's what I've heard anyway so, anyway so yes so okay so at this point Chris she's ticked off at Kenton but then she realizes, or uh, who is it that points out to her? Is it I think Cinder? It was, I or thought it was Bayon. Was it Bayon? I can't remember. I don't keep her. What her one of her very one of clear. her advisors tells her that hey, it's you know what they might need is a skilled diplomat. And she's like, wait, what? <laughs> That's what you can do. <laughs> oh yeah, that thing that I do because I'm apparently a duchess. So yay, diplomat! Yeah. Yay. And so she basically says, all right, let's approach him. We're going to work together. We're going to get things worked out. And then he's going to help me. Because mm-hmm. otherwise, because the- well, he, he started saying, well, I can't do anything for you because I'm trying to save the DM so that I won't. Otherwise, Sam Masters won't exist. That was the thing that frustrated me because he was like, I've got, you know, I've got a, I've got my own troubles that I need to take care of. 
if I don't take care of it, then the DM will no longer exist. And she says, and that's more important than my troubles. And I'm just like, you little princess, shut up. <laughs> He's trying Does yours to have save... a timeline? He's got a very strict timeline and he's, he's got He's trying to all save to his do. entire order. He's the leader of this organization and it's just like, come on, give the guy a break. <laughs> he's got a lot on his plate. A lot. Uh-huh. It it, it yeah. seemed very very different from the Chris that we see in the later Cosmere books. Mm-hmm. So. I think I get the feeling from later conversations she has too that she grows up a lot through mm-hmm. this series yeah. because even over the course of this book she has oh yeah and what is it i think i think it might be Bayon. like he's having her after the first thing before they they suggest that she become a diplomat for him or mm-hmm. you know help him out is they're like you need to start judging people on who they are not on the outward appearance or right something it's like so. beauty and the beast oh don't judge people based on appearances <laughs> yeah or you get turned into a newt. Or some, a what? beast, right? Oh, what? is that not the same Beauty and the Beast story? No. Monty Python you'll wasn't know. part of that canon? You'll, you'll it's get a newt. better? <laughs> <laughs> I got better. Um, okay, so they talk about it, They de- and Kitten decides he needs to visit each of the other Taisha, the, the leaders of all the mm-hmm. guilds, essentially, Yeah. to get their support, because he has to have a unanimous vote, <laughs> which, which is made is very like difficult, impossible. which is made very difficult by the fact that Admiral Delius will always vote against Lord Merchant Vey. Mm-hmm. And so, so it basically makes unanimous for anything impossible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so the first one he goes to talk to, of course, is Lord Admiral, De- Admiral Delius. Mm-hmm. I, I like the, um, the line with, with his friend, Eric, when he mm-hmm. says, um, oh, good. I've, all, I've needed a drink. I'm not sure no, about uh, that. <laughs> My echo wants to join the conversation. She's not part of our three merry hosts. She sure thinks quiet. she is. <laughs> Apparently, she's trying to take over the world anyway. I'm but, sure it'll be fine. But yeah. So they get to Lord Ad- Admiral Delius and... Jordan, why don't you give us a preview of who this guy is? <laughs> He's Breeze. He's Breeze with l- less charisma. And more alcohol. Lots more alcohol. <laughs> Copious, insane and, amounts of alcohol. And lots and lots of money and power. Yep. So one thing that really like that I noticed before we go into the interaction with him is when they first get there, he offers um, Kenton a drink. Mm-hmm. And Kitten says, no, thank you. He says, oh, because Sandmasters don't drink. And Kitten has a, an interesting line that I, I thought was kind of something to consider. He says, uh, we don't drink because it does strange things to us. Now, Sandmasters, when they're sandbending, is, I'm, I'm going to keep calling it sandbending. I don't care. <laughs> like, but when they're, when they're, you know, mastering sand... They use the water from inside their own bodies. And mm-hmm. so you think if you've got a higher blood alcohol content, that could mess with you. Because if you, suddenly you're taking the water out, that will probably send your blood alcohol content up a bit as well. Or, or maybe it, it tries to, or maybe they try to metabolize the alcohol when they're mastering sand. And, which would make drunk little sand things. <laughs> so that would do strange things. Yes, I could see that either way. But I just, it's an interesting look at the magic system because, again, it's not a belief system or anything. It's just, it, it messes with them. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. there, there's actually in, in Japan, like, part of the culture is that when you, you go to work and then you go get, like, super drunk after work with all your buddies and all your coworkers. Mm-hmm. And some people will, like, get fake doctor's notes to say, I can't have alcohol <laughs> because they... They get so they don't like getting that drunk or right. whatever else. And there are there is something too where I think some Asian people have a lower tolerance for alcohol too. Mm-hmm. Yep. Now, so of course note. he has his fun little. They have their uh, their discussion where basically Delia says, "If they for- votes for you, I'll vote against, and vice versa. That's just the way it is." Mm-hmm. Because it's the only thing I can consider that I do that I'm doing 
good and making a moral positive choice is voting against him <laughs> because he is the epitome of evil. And, <laughs> and it's just like, thanks. Now, one thing I noticed is as they leave his place, there's a shot of, of Delius that's really creepy looking. He's got like the Kubrick stare going on where he's like shadowed. His facial features are very, very shadowed. I'm like, he looks like an evil character. I don't know if that's a just something, you know, a side thing that happened by the artist or if that's oh. meant to mean something. Yeah, but yeah, I see. It, it looked now. very, it very looks, creepy. It looks me. just weird, and it's like because they have like a full page picture of him and his servant, and then like mm-hmm. they have like a little overlay or over just like his head and shoulders, and yeah. like a little profile, like just that with just the shaded thing. So that's it's interesting. It's like it's a really shaded. He's got this creepy grin, mm-hmm. and they say something about uh, it's the nature oh, of the it's... wealthy to hate anyone more influential than themselves. And, he and says, then he just grins and he says, quiet. And I'm quiet. like, okay, I don't know if I can trust you at this point. Yeah, he's just creepy. Well, you probably can't because he's constantly drunk. And contrary. Yeah, or maybe Brandon has also has a habit, especially at this time, to have jovial people kind of be the secret mastermind betrayer. Mm-hmm. Like it happened in Elantris. Where mm-hmm. the guy who just Sleeping. everybody oh he's cheerful and then so, no 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 that's Warbreaker yeah I was I caught myself so I was um, like wait and then in Warbreaker the same sort of thing and I'm just and so and this was at the same time Brandon was writing though so I'm wondering because I remember nothing about the prose version so maybe mm-hmm. this is clear to people who've read the pr- prose version but if you've only read the two books that are out you can't make that call. we don't know yet yeah exactly and. And so it's just, it's one of those, it's, it's a shot that makes you just think, okay, something's not right here. Mm-hmm. Um, see, then they go yeah. visit uh, Lord, the Lord Artisan Wright. Yeah. Now, so apparently the DM owes them a bunch of money and Kitten thought that they owed a lot more than they actually did. Mm-hmm. For the paperwork appar- that he'd read, right? Right, because apparently the DM owes a total of 700,000 lock, which apparently we don't that's, know the, what that is. that's the coin. It's lock. A lot of money. But then he, so he's saying, okay, well, if we pay back the 700,000 lock, and the Lord Artisan's just like, whoa, 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 whoa. I mean, according to our records, you owe 150,000, and then t- they said to the fields. So I'm guessing that means like the the farmer's guild or something probably yeah maybe be. but it's never clarified so, but that's not our really guess. clear but and so suddenly kitten's just like so who do we owe the five hundred thousand to yeah <laughs> but hmm. the plot thickens yeah Indeed. and i don't know like and this is where like again I don't, it makes it difficult to really understand what is what's happening in the story because I don't have someone explaining what lack is. Mm-hmm. It's just sort of thrown at you because they don't have time to just explain a concept the way they would in uh, in a book. Right. Well, like there's no conversation like when uh, I mean it's sort of an infodope conversation. I'll admit, but Vin and Kelsier when he's explaining the three types of currency, I believe they mention it. When they're when they're chatting, because they talk about clips. Oh, not oh, three. But I guess it's just two clips and. Boxes. But he's talking about it in the sense of using it for, for right. Elementary, but it's right. But it's there to help explain. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it. Brandon works it in to give some world building. Yeah. And so, and you don't really have that in a graphic There's, novel. Yeah. Because long conversations where people are just chatting in graphic novels, you tend to start flipping pages. <laughs> You get bored, or it, or it takes up so much of the page that it's not graphic anymore. It's, it's yeah, exactly. It's, it's prose, so. And so, but yeah, I I look for I I just knowing Brandon, we're eventually going to get a more polished version of this story. Because mm-hmm. he'll well, I don't somehow know. hammer it out over like two vacations or something. Because he's Brandon. I think I think what Brandon is planning to do 
I, I think he is planning a second, an actual novel in this world, but it's going to be a sequel to, to White Sand, and he'll probably explain a lot of stuff kind of in the backstory. That would make mm. a lot of Cause, sense. Because he said he doesn't want people to feel like they have to read it to understand everything. Yeah. And so I, th- I think just sort of in the, the world-building backstory of the next one, he'll kind of give a lot of insight into what happened. Mm. So sort of like Mistborn Era 2, but with a lot more explanation of what happened. Yeah. So. And then, okay, so next person they go to visit is Lord General Regent. Um, We're all guessing on pronunciation here. <laughs> well, R A A G E N T. I mean, yeah, R- Ray, Regent Rogent. I. I mean, I don't if know. if we were on Elantris, then it'd be Ray A G E N T or something. But yeah, we don't talk about and, that. We don't go there. And anymore. he's <laughs> and he's Eric's Ray father. Agent. Yeah, he's he's so. not happy with Eric at all. Mm-hmm. And of course, when they decide to go see him, he goes to the place and they say, "Oh no, he went hunting because he's avoiding you." <laughs> Just he like, went to the deep sands. Yeah, which, which are scary. Mm-hmm. Now, just because they have sandworms. <laughs> lots. Yeah, of yeah. Just lots of sharp, pointy teeth. There's yeah. your other uh, Monty, Python Monty Python reference. <laughs> Thank you. I was looking for that. Indeed. So, so of course they go there and. Kitten heads off sort of depressed and he's immediately attacked by the, what are they called? The Kirstians? Oh, I can't ever say it because they got like a Z and then a yeah. T. It's I think like it's Kirstians Kir- or something I think, like that. I think, it's, and I, I think it's Kirstians. Kirstians. Yeah. I can't so. pronounce anything in this book. I, I do think it was interesting though because he tries to defend himself with Sand Mastery and they're, what is it, Turkin? Is that the word they use for immune to sand mastery, oh, Turkin? Oh, maybe. Might, I, think, I know it starts with T, at least. Yeah. So I'm trying to figure out exactly how Turkin works. Is it basically if mastered sand touches it, then it just immediately becomes unmasterable? I think, like it, turns black I think it, just, it's, it's just it blocks it or it, or it can't be influenced. It, it's, it's I not, think it, it cancels it. It's like, it's, it's like aluminum. That it's, like it can be acted upon, but you can't use the... The actual magic on it. Yeah, I, I think that if if mastered sand touches it, it's basically drained of its investiture. Mm. That's my interpretation of based on what I've seen. Yeah, I can't claim that for certain, but I think that's kind of how it works. Um, and so Kitten starts thinking, wait, how are these people Turkin? And so, because I don't think they're wearing carapace. No, they're wearing armor that's got. It on it. They are. It does, it oh no, no, no I'm thinking. I'm thinking of the later attack. That's what happened. So this one, there is Turkin armor, whatever stuff in this one. Right, but later on, I think what she does is she actually takes like the dissolved paste and coats herself. There, there's another assassin who attacks him towards. The oh end yes, of the book. yeah. There's a lady who attacks him by herself, and because she's, she's got not because she's, she's not wearing armor. armor, and he's just like, "How are you? How am you know, I not hurting you? <laughs> this uh-huh. should hurt you." But. So, yeah, yes. the attack happens. Um, he's, you know, he defends himself because he can't use Sand Mastery to fight him. He ends up uh, using his sword, and using his sword. And then he's just like, now the sand doesn't have to touch you for me to hurt you with Sand Mastery. Mm-hmm. And he starts pushing things with the sand. I'm like, OK, that'll work. That, yeah, that definitely works. Oh. It's just one of those things where you're just like, there's a lot of ways you could play around with this Mm -hmm. which is exactly what brandon loves to do so yeah (laughs) at the same time i don't know all the ways that they're actually doing it since they it's it's so difficult to actually see what's going on exactly yeah and i mean and you're mostly seeing him doing sand mastery versus you didn't get to see the the ones who all died before doing it and they did it the more traditional way right so you don't know what's norm And, and so that's kind of his thing though is you know Kenton likes to play around because since he couldn't do it with enough strength, he has to play more with dexterity and, and finesse creativity and, and finesse. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Which in some ways it kind of reminds me of Vin where Vin mm. wasn't necessarily like 
more powerful than everyone else, but she just did things better than everyone else, much more efficiently, because mm-hmm. she was brought up on the streets, and so that's sort of her shtick, where well, resources she, are scarce. And she also didn't have the, the body mass to put behind some yeah. of the pushes and stuff, too. Right. And, and so it, it changes things, and so he's sort of the same way, because he didn't have all the power, he's learned to do things via the 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 technical way and get every scrimp out of it but uh mm. it's 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 one of these things i'm like oh i wish i wish I could, we could delve a little more into that so that i could mm-hmm. get a little more of a feel because we don't get to see many other people sand bend at all and dang it you're mm-hmm. not making me do it but um, <laughs> you're welcome but we don't get to see anyone else really do it and so kenton keeps telling us is oh i'm just not as good as everyone else well our ability to understand how much better everyone else is is limited to him saying how much he's not good at it. And, okay, well, this person has more uh, sand tentacles flying around him than he does, <laughs> but we don't get to see many of those scenes, so... Right. It's another one of those things if, where... In it, this, feels ve- it feels very... It feels very informed. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's an informed strength. Because everyone else is like, holy crap, he's a sandbender. And he's like, yeah, but I'm not a very good one. And it's like, oh, he's sort of our only one we get to see, though, so... Yeah, so it's hard to gauge it. I mean, he's flying. Right. That seems pretty cool to me. And it's actually a fairly <laughs> unique power within the Cosmere. Right. The only other people who can really fly are the the Skybreakers. And the, and the Mistborn and then the, yeah, those two. And the Mistborn are actually just pushing off of things. And mm-hmm. so they there's... Can, they can float, kind of. Theirs isn't even... <laughs> like, theirs isn't true flight like the others are. Because mm-hmm. you can you can jerry-rig then, things to where they end up killing themselves in uh, Mistborn. No, 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 no. Yeah. Windrunners aren't flying. They're falling with, with style. style. Yes. <laughs> That's all flying is. <laughs> But now, of course, even though Kitten's able to defend himself, he's eventually outnumbered. And yeah. who shows up but the yes. woman who absolutely despises his existence. Well, she but, was, she'd already, is that where she said that she was his bodyguard yet? Or is this when she finds out? Or is this when she tells him? I think this is when she tells him. No, she told him at the very beginning, I think. Yeah, and he's like, well, you got to keep up with me. And, and she, yeah. I think he offers to have her come up to the building because they don't have stairs yet. And she refuses. And she's, she's like, no, I will use the ladder. Mm-hmm. She's like, don't touch me with your, your unholy sand. And that's, what is going on? <laughs> All of my things off? are listening to me. This, <laughs> that was actually, that, that was Siri. <laughs> bad Siri, bad. We're not even talking about... Uh, I know! I don't know. Look, the point is that uh, <laughs> some of us were smart and actually muted things, and Bill, I just don't know what you're doing here. <laughs> so yes, uh, but anyway, but she she points out the thing about eight warriors a day, doesn't she? Yeah. yeah. Yes. I, which... Because they have like all these poor, like these scars and stuff and these tattoos. Well, are they tattoos or are they scars? Anyway, they're... they're they're both. both. Yeah. And they're and they can do it eight per day or every other day, I thought. Eight per day. Now, one yeah. thing I noticed is later on they talk about how they waited until the twelfth hour. So do they I mean technically they don't have days and nights because it's tidally locked. Mm-hmm. But does that mean that I for think them he, a new day starts every twelve I, hours? I think it was that the attack happened at the twelfth hour before because they, so they are noting. Until the ne- I'm guessing that must be it. It must be a twenty four hour period. Well, or I whatever got their the impression day length is. I got the impression that it wasn't uh, like a a limiting thing due to magic, like it was cultural. Right, but what I'm, that's what I'm saying is they, you know, they waited exactly until a specific time. So that it would be the next day. And they said they waited until the 12th hour. I don't know if that means that the first attack was at the 12th hour or if they have or if they divide days by 12 hours or what. But it doesn't say exactly what time the attack happens because they are listing hours on some of them, but they didn't Mm -hmm. say it before this one. Right. All I know is it's really nice to know that, Okay, we're on the clock. We're off the clock. I don't know. The clock is there because they can send up to eight. Now, does it, and I don't think it has to be all eight at a time, but I think 
you know, once those eight have gone, that's yeah. it. Yeah. But I think when you're dealing with a sandmaster, then yeah, mm-hmm. let's over try and overwhelm them. Mm-hmm. And she also tells them that apparently the job of killing him has been given to a specific family or clan, I guess, of yeah. the Christians. So mm-hmm. she says that. Yeah. Which you know, um, the family that slays together stays together. So. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But she and she also, you know, even though she saved him, she's just like, don't think this means I don't hate you because I absolutely despite oh, like she is very is just like she right is there. vitriolic about. <laughs> mm-hmm. So this is this is something that I don't quite understand from the context in the story that I think, again, this is if this were prose, we get a bit more understanding. Mm-hmm. We don't really get an explanation why it's unholy. Mm-hmm. They're just told it's unholy. And I feel like in any other story, we would have been told these are the cultural reasons why this is considered bad. And who knows? I can't I can't remember. It may even be said in the prose version, but I'm not sure. I, I can't I, it remember. It looks like in her, we do see like one little segment of her doing a prayer or something later on. And she's touching sand or whatever else. She's just doing it. So I'm guessing that sand is holy to her, too. So my out there guess is that it's probably that he's using sand and he's using it in ways that her religion doesn't see as proper or is abusing it right. or something to that effect. True. Which would make sense. So, yeah, so, that's, so it's not so much know. unholy as sacrilegious. That Yeah, I mean, they kind of intermingle mm-hmm. in some ways, too. But right. th- I just seeing her using sand in her whatever relig- religious thing right. made me wonder if it was sand is itself very is kind of thing. I mean, it's, it kind of makes me think of how in Roshar, the Shin don't want to walk on stone. Right. So, I mean, they, these people have to walk on sand, obviously, but right. an equivalent like certain kinds of nature are important in certain ways. So, yeah. Yeah, I just would have liked that to be clear yeah it would be it would be nice to have something more clear than just oh everybody hates it everybody everybody thinks it's bad yep so anyway after this attack kitten decides he's gonna go see the lord general and eric's just Mm. like oh daddy good (laughs) (laughs) those daddy issues i have those oh yes they Mm. you do huh no the the character (laughs) nope 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 (laughs) now i'm i've i now have a new view of who Jordan is? Well, I do support uh, different head cannons for reality. So, <laughs> right. Oh, and he uh, also before he he sees an old friend who burned himself out. Yes. Um, no, that, that happens after mastered. he gets back from the net. Is that after? I think that's after he gets it's back. All it all blurs together. It, it's true. Yeah. So we we, we can talk about a Lauren. A Lauren shows up. He's overextended yeah. himself and burned himself out, mm-hmm. which apparently is a thing that can happen. Overmastered in... is what they call it. Yes. Overmastered. Which mm-hmm. maybe it is a thing that can happen, but then again, maybe not. Maybe it's a mm-hmm. cultural taboo that they didn't realize is preventing them from growing stronger. And who knows? Yeah. It sounds because Kenton has a theory later on that he's like, I wasn't able to do it for a while right after the attack. And now I can do more than I did. Mm-hmm. And so he wonders if if it's like building a muscle like that's it's the equivalent of like you you do it so hard and then you have to rest and then you can do right. more so yeah, it's I mean, possible that his friend is just in the burned out stage still before right. he can do more again well because wasn't he uh he was an undermastral correct i don't remember what I he believe, was i believe Aloran was an undermastral and so hey maybe what happens he comes back stronger and ends up as a master himself i don't mm-hmm. know it, making, it, predictions, making predictions, making predictions. <laughs> um, well, all I know is that they should stop overmastering and just master. <laughs> they should master. Can they undermaster? No, apparently, because that was the whole reason they didn't <laughs> want to let Kenton in. <laughs> anyway, so into the deep sands we go. Mm. Where. Okay, so guys, Eric's father is a jerk. Yeah. He is an absolute jerk. Mm-hmm. Um, he doesn't. He doesn't let Eric come, does he? Oh no, I guess Eric. No, Eric shows up. Eric does come. Because he, right. he he rides in on on the little 
critter and saves them from saves his the, dad. Yeah, the so that Ken can actually kill it without worrying about trying to save the dad mm-hmm. and himself. But yeah, so apparently he's one of the kind of one of the leaders of the charge of getting rid of the Diem, because mm-hmm. it's like he wants the prestige that they offer, but he doesn't want them to have any prestige. Mm. And so he basically wants it for himself. Yeah. And so he kind of so what he does is he offers to hire members of the DM after the DM is destroyed. It's just like, dude, just it's dude. Just, it's just a hostile takeover. Yeah, but yeah. more hostile than most. <laughs> yeah, it's like here I'll pay you, but you know I'm gonna crush your organization first. Uh huh. So. And at which point, yeah. Kitten's just like, dude, forget nah, you. And he, and, he, no. and he heads off. Mm-hmm. And then they find out, that, or he sees them, uh, like, poking this creature that they've been hunting and messing with it. And apparently it's a baby. <laughs> and the mommy comes in. The, the, yeah. the, the Karak <laughs> comes in and basically starts eating everything. Mm-hmm. And, like, what I think, what is it? Eric's dad is like, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll give prestige to whoever saves instant me. promotion <laughs> instant promotion he's like save me save me here's your incentive and then he's, and like, he's like yeah he's yeah. like I, I don't need a promotion but i'm kind of running short on allies right now so i here. need to hit that next uh rep level <laughs> with your faction so that i can uh, get the good rewards so Ooh, the green ding the green ding is a good ding yep hmm. so much harder than the yellow ding so much these are anyway. wow references for those who don't know <laughs> okay that's and, good to know because uh, i didn't know bill and i are far too enjoying them mm-hmm. for our own benefit <laughs> but yeah so you know they have the big fight with the the karak and then kitten comes mm-hmm. in saves the day dad's getting dragged down under to the abyss and his son comes in and saves him and it's all very beautiful and daddy issue resolving Mm. and you Mm -hmm. know (laughs) and wonderful and then kitten decides to play hardball (laughs) Mm. and they start he's saying you know what will it take to get your vote you saw that what masters can do is more than just prestige we could offer you real power Mm -hmm. and basically bargains and he says all right what i'll do is i will provide to you at least one Mastral and a sand, Sandbender of each rank. Yes, Sandbender. I don't <laughs> care. I hear you. I hear all of our <laughs> listeners staring at me judgingly. And I'm just telling you, it's a Sandbender. <laughs> and now I'm really tempted to wear my Toff wig next time. <laughs> I'm not going to wear the Condex because I'm on the Condex right now, but I could totally wear the wig. <laughs> Since we keep talking about Sandbending, you know. Oh, that's awesome. I anyway. love it. Love it, love it, love it. Mm. So. And and then there's just a sort of weird little aside where Ken decides, okay, I'm going to allow families into the DM. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was it, a weird aside. That's, uh, I like think it, I got the feeling that it was kind of prompted by watching Eric and his dad have conflict and possible. thinking about how much conflict he had with his dad and the fact that his mom was a dark sider and all of that and just the whole we're sand monks basically and we can't have families and then it causes problems because people normally want families or often do and so he's like we should fix things that explanation requires feelings so you know apparently i have those (laughs) no it's it's a good point (laughs) no it's a very it's a very good at the same time it's also just oh i didn't realize this was really a thing Mm-hmm. But I thought the yeah, big they, they deal was re- the fact that she was a she dark, was from side. dark side. I thought they yeah. were racist. It turns out they're something they're, more than that. I don't like, know what the word is. Yeah, I don't know, if, yeah, I don't know like, if they're celibate or not, but they're, they're just they're racist Jedi's. Yeah, and we all saw how what happened to the Jedi's. That was yeah. mm-hmm. so. Well, okay, so Jedi's then Chris, sand. Chris starts going. <laughs> I That's will end you. <laughs> hey, I was being good and on my best behavior. You brought up Star Wars. Sorry. You were not on your Sorry. best behavior. You started us off with. <laughs> I've been on my best behavior since then. That first time didn't count. I was a different person then. 
<laughs> I've grown. That was that was past Jordan's problem, not exactly. Uh, no, it was past Bill's problem. <laughs> no, it's current and future Bill's problem. Let's be real here. Ah, uh, shoot. Uh, so Chris goes on her diplomatic mission. Mm-hmm. You have anything about diplomatic mission? Peaceful diplomatic ship plans? Huh? Huh? I want fancy dresses. That's what I want, but I don't want to make them because it sounds like a lot of work. She's got a fancy dress. Are you kidding? The number of frills she wears out where it's like sand. I like Padme's better. So yeah. But, uh. no, it, it, okay. All Star Wars <laughs> memes aside about sand getting everywhere. Sand does get everywhere. It does. Like oh my those. The, I'll. Uh, seriously, I don't normally notice the clothes in these types of things, but hers are so over the top. That's all I can see is all the various folds that is just sand. It's There's no way that you would ever wear that in a culture around sand. It's just not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like you go, yeah, you, you go to the islands. You know what they're wearing? Very little. Why? Because sand gets everywhere. <laughs> or it's very baggy so you can shake it out easily. Yeah. Or, or what she wears is, is pretty baggy, but there's just a lot of frills on the mm. bagginess. No, she's got tight. They're legging type pant things, which would make mm. sense because you don't want sand up in your skirt. Mm-mm. No, thank you. Hmm. So... So but hers yeah. sort of works, but yeah, there it is a little, a little much with the frills. But. Yeah, um, but not, she goes off to she problem. goes off to meet with uh, Lady Tremaine, um, <laughs> the the lady judge. I fully judge. support calling her this. <laughs> she's much well, she, nicer again, than Lady Tremaine. At least she's got the, she's got the Lady Tremaine hair, the, like you the pointed out last. Front, whatever thing, yeah, yeah, she does. And so, I should look at what that's called. And she ends up basically saying that Chris needs to talk to Lord Beggar Nilto, who isn't technically one of the the Ty- Taisha. Ta- the Taisha. Taisha is it Taisha? Oh, good. Yeah, the Taisha. The Taisha. Like, He's a ta- Taisha. Taisha. I think is sig- singular, and Taisha is the group, or vice yeah. versa. Yeah, Ta- Taisha. Oh goodness. Taisha, oh! I think, is the He's individual, singular. and Taisha yeah. is the okay. Is the group. anyway? Yes. But so he's. Doesn't have any legal status, but he has a whole lot of influence. He's Probably like he's, the popular vote. Yeah, okay. it says he's he's arguably as powerful as any of them. And mm-hmm. she goes to talk to him, and he's <laughs> kind of creepy. Did now, you guys ever see, um, since we're referencing all the random media, did you guys ever watch Rurouni Kenshin or read that? Oh, heck yeah. That's how I was starting I can't anime. remember the bad guy's name, but there's a bad guy who's like covered Shishio. in... Shishio. Shishio, yes. He totally looks like Shishio. He's got the mm-hmm. bandages all over. So, yes. Sorry, that was my one random. <laughs> he, he, needs, he desperately <laughs> needs some moisturizer. Oh, yeah. I think he needs some skin grafts. Or Amongst something. other things. Yeah. So, so, so far as I know, we don't know exactly who Hoyt is in this book. I know that he's one of the theories. I think the, the more accurate th- or more likely theory is there's a guy who's got this loot who shows up in the background of several scenes in the, in the first volume. But I have seen theories that it's Nilto. Hmm. I don't know that that's the case because Nilto has been in place for a long time, but it it doesn't, it doesn't feel like Hoyd to me, but it, if it was, then I don't know. Uh Uh-huh. So like there are a few, he he feels a little too, yeah, he feels a a little too personally interested too. There were a few ways of speaking that I, I could see it, but that's also one of Brandon's styles when somebody's just supposed to be clever. Mm-hmm. And so, so again, my, I, I just wanted to put forward. It's a theory that I've seen. I personally believe it's someone else. So mm-hmm. who do you think it is? So if you look at the first volume of the book in a few different scenes, there's this guy just sitting down like by a wall. He's a beggar. He's got this cloak and a, and a hood and he's got some sort of, lute some stringed instrument that he mm. that he plays it's like a zither oh. or a lute or something i'm sorry and he shows up guy. he shows up a few times so it's one of those okay he's here again it's this guy again it's not just some random faceless somebody and, and it it seems sort of hoid it's very you know i'm here but you know unless you're looking for me you don't know you i'm don't, here yeah that, that has been um, something I've been trying to do is find him, but yeah, which is why I, you know, I think that is a little bit of a strength of the argument for Nilto, just because Brandon has said that he 
made Hoyd's part bigger in these books, but hmm. that may not show know. up until book three. Yeah, I and so you know, I once know. once book three is over, then I think we'll have more information to try and figure mm-hmm. out where he shows up. Right now, I'm leaning towards the the music beggar dude. So I'll have to look for him next time and look again. Um, but yeah, so he's kind of creepy, and then suddenly he says, "Oh, by the way, these these belong to you." Mm-hmm. And she he hands, sends he sends a kid out to go get it, and then he ends the uh-huh. conversation with handing it to her. Yeah, and he hands her a you know a pistol and a ring, and, and the pistol immediate, still has blood on it. <laughs> right, and immediately Chris just you know she says how you know where did you get this? He says people tend to drop things, and I I, I, I take interest in catching them before you know, mm-hmm. and. She suddenly she's just angry at him. She's just like, "You're disgusting," because the only way that somebody would have gotten those things, they're, they're what's his name, Gavin. They're Gavins, and mm-hmm. the only way that they would have gotten them is off of his dead body. Yeah, and oh, so, what's a little corpse robbing between friends? And so I think you know, in her mind, it's like either he killed him or he just he watched it happen, corp- or yeah. he and he robbed his corpse, mm-hmm. which. You know, that's not cool. So Yeah. Okay. Th- sorry. After that scene, mm-hmm. it hung on those frames for a bit. Um, Which frames? Th- so after their meeting with Nilto. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It does. It shows the crowd for like yeah. two or three well, so strips. There, it's one of these things where I'm trying to understand what they're showing us. We see the translator girl that's with them, whose name escapes me. She, like, takes a couple bites of an apple, and then she tosses it. And you see, like, the same beggar kid from earlier, like, pick it up. Uh He does. I didn't see that. Oh, because I just sat there and studied it, trying to figure out. It was like a Where's Waldo, frankly, just trying to figure out what's different and what's going on. And I'm just trying to figure out what's the purpose of that scene. Is it to indicate she was purposely giving that kid food is it a secret message is it the kid it almost, i don't know without without seeing realizing the kid had picked up the apple before it, it almost felt like just that the crowd moves on that things still are moving on that it's not all what's going on with her that was yeah. the feeling i got but with that apple thing i don't know what yeah, i just to think of it yeah i'm not sure it's sort of a it seems sort of a lost in the crowd, you know, everything moves on and mm-hmm. as important as things are, they're unnoticed by everyone else. I, I don't know. Maybe that's a little bit too uh <laughs> we, don't, we don't know how to take it, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm at a loss. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I do remember thinking that they were spending, a, they had a couple strips in a row that I was like, and eh, nothing's happening. What's going on? Mm-hmm. So... Um, and then she's moping in her room, right? And trying not to mope. But. And well, and when uh, Kenton gets back to the DM, mm-hmm. Dryle's there. <laughs> and yeah, did you guys see my media, social media post at all? Or Dryle is vile. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I have to put it in because he bugs me. <laughs> Dryle is vile. So yes, continue. And, and so Kenton basically throws down the gauntlet. He's like, "You can't be disobeying me." So we're gonna have it out there. The it was even it's even worse than that because because he's like making a big speech and trying to sway everybody against right. Kenton. And he's like, "What's he even doing? He's not doing anything for us." And it's like he's trying to save the DM. So shut your mouth. Right. You're just mo- whining. And so finally, Kenton's just like, "Okay, you know what? Let's do this. Mm-hmm. Let's you know have it out. And if you win, then you're the Lord Mastral. Here we go." <laughs> And but um, now, Dryle, Kenton want, yeah, Dryle yeah, yeah, twists Kenton, it so that it happens before yeah. the vote. Kenton basically says, "I want to save the DM, and then we can have the mm-hmm. we can have it out." And Dryle's just like, "No, I want to have it out beforehand because that way you will never be Lord Mastral." I'm just like, "Wow, you he's are a, just a little he's, he's so petty. Jerk. He's exactly he's so petty." And so Kitten starts practicing, trying to figure out, okay, this guy can use, what was it, like 15 or 20? 20, 20, I thought it was like 25 or something. 25, 25. is the number yeah. they said. He can use 25 ribbons, and Kitten can do three. three. 
and so he starts to using three at that and so he starts practicing with this you know sort of apprentice Mm -hmm. um kid who he was one of the few who survived and yeah um they start figuring out that like if you swipe at somebody else's sand it if you hit it on the you side, to... you have to hit, like, the side of yeah. it. You have to use the side of yours to hit theirs, and it cancels both of them. Yeah. To which, okay, that's interesting. Th- that still sounds like you're not getting anything out of this, because you still Because, have... I mean, you, you, can, you can knock out well, his no, no. Three, three at a time. But... If you, I think if you hit it at the right angle, yours isn't deactivated. Oh, really? Yeah, I think that's how it was said. Because he said, if I hit it, his deactivates. If the other one hits it... That one deactivates, and if they go straight at each other, they both activate, deactivate. Okay, mm-hmm. I missed that. Somehow. That's how. I'm gonna, that's I'm how gonna I read check because I can't. That's how I read it. I can't remember. But it, again, it was kind of unclear because it was trying to tell us in pictures, and it was just—it's hard to animate sand in a still frame. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically, he's you know because one of Brandon's inspirations, he wanted a magic system where finesse was more important than strength. Mm-hmm. And so he started playing around with this one and gave it to Kenton because Kenton's not strong with it, but he works on skill and application rather than just brute strength. Yeah, and uh, it's like it's a neat concept. Um, mm-hmm. I just it's hard to understand. Yeah, I medium. can't quite follow it in I this haven't, scenario. I ha- yeah, like I said, I haven't read the prose one yet, but I can also see it being a little difficult to describe how 25 strands are moving in prose. Oh, yeah. Right. Because how do you describe, well, the first one goes to this angle and that one goes to this. So, I mean, you have well, to be very, let the reader imagine a lot of how it would work. Which is how Brandon, I mean, that's how Brandon mm-hmm. worked with uh, with Alamancy, because there was a lot of imagination with that. I yeah, but I, I it just feels like you... I I don't know that I would have imagined it from reading it the same way that it's mm-hmm. conveyed in the in the comic. Right. So I mean cuz like with with 25 you can say you know they went in all directions. Yeah, and stuff or like something that, to that so. effect, but And it says it's the Or tip. like a, you know, he stood at the center like an octopus falling out of a tree or <laughs> a whirlwind of sand ribbons, I don't know. Writing prompt for our listeners, write a story about an octopus falling out of a tree. <laughs> Frankly, I'm more interested in the part of the story of how the octopus got there in the first place. And then email it to us at studies at gmail.com. I really want to hear these stories, guys. So please don't disappoint. Have you guys seen Finding Dory? No. Yes. You need to watch Finding Dory. There's an octopus who falls out of a tree. (laughs) He falls out of a tree? I I don't remember that. Anyway. anyway, It's there. Tangent. Tangent. (laughs) Sorry. Totally tangent today. Tangent. Okay. So then they go visit the Lord Merchant, who is Kirstian. <laughs> so he doesn't have really good feelings towards Sandmasters. They're not best friends. Yeah, no. You know. Oh, but and they're he makes gonna them wait be. like two hours, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. It's like two hours and they're sitting waiting. I, I love though, because Kitten finally he just starts playing around with sand to the point where they come out and it's like, dude, you're defiling our my 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 lobby, my waiting area, and he's like, I mean, I'll wait as long as you need, but I gotta entertain myself somehow. <laughs> and she starts, uh, and I'm just like, Kitten is, in my opinion, just enough of a jerk to be lovable the way he applies it. Mm-hmm. And he even he even calls himself a bit of a brat at the end of uh-huh. it. And the second one, he's like, I was a brat <laughs> to uh-huh. my dad, and it's like, I'm glad you realized. Speaking this. of. That was one thing that was interesting. We're going to jump him back. His first conversation with Ace, I, Ash, whatever his name is. whatever. Ais, um, where he basically, you know, says, you know, she's kind of a jerk to him. He's like, okay, whatever, forget, forget you. And he flies up and he goes into his room and he's just like, that's exactly how Dryle or my father would have responded. I can't do that. And so, so he goes, goes down and he apologizes. And she says, you know, you can apologize all you want. I still hate you. He's like, nonetheless, the apology stands. It was like, okay, classy move. You're Very trying. Cla- and she's gruff to him, but I think it does get under her skin a little bit. Mm-hmm. But he's, he's being 
the better person. He's in being a way. civil. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a shame. Yeah. So anyway, Vey is a jerk to them. Eventually, just completely throws them out, and I think oh, he's a jerk. He's, he's a jerk to both uh, Kitten and to Ash. Mm-hmm. He, he because he says that she has betrayed her people. I'm not sure exactly what she's done, other than the fact that she's. A she's, bodyguard for she's Kenna. a bodyguard for him. That's that's what it feels like to me is that even she hates it just mm-hmm. because her, but she I, agrees with the people trying to kill him. Yeah, I'm I'm not quite sure if there's any backstory beyond like something else that she's done or you know. Well, there's I don't know. even in the first one when the first little bit you get with her, the other people consider her like a traitor even then because she's mm-hmm. working with the with the equivalent of the cops, the senior tra- tracks. Right, the tracks. Yeah, tracks. So I think there's there's something there too. That she's mm-hmm. not sticking with her her group as much. Yep. So. Yeah, I'm yeah. not sure about all their rules. They have a lot of them. Yeah, they're not clearly explained. On the plus side, you know, at least it's unclear. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, so he throws them out and then Ace basically says, never defend me again. Like mm-hmm. with Sand Mastery or not, but particularly with Sand Mastery. Yeah. Um, and then I'm not quite sure what the message for Ash was on the floor. Oh, I do. It's um, later on. She mentions that the boat races thing didn't go well. That they. So right. I'm guessing it was a report on that they got skunked with that because they had tried to do to catch them with the boat races, but they got advance notice on it. So they didn't catch them. Okay. That's my guess. Right. And that's the other thing is the, per- the, her quarry that she's really looking for is, um, Nilto. Mm-hmm. You know, she's, she's after Nilto. Yeah. And so, which is one of those things you're just like, Oh, okay. Well, I guess we're stacking up all the plots. <laughs> They're just all there. Uh huh. <laughs> Texas Blade chimed in. He says, I'm just thinking about the last Airbender episode where Aang does the octopus. I don't remember that episode. What? When are he... we talking about the pentapus? Are we talking? What are we talking about? No, he's there's oh, an episode where he's Oh, just, with he's the suckers training. on their face. I well, thought no, that was one where no. they like try to give themselves the. No, fake that's dis- that so what, is, what are you talking about, Jordan? Uh, there's there's an episode where uh, like he's training with the. Uh, What's, right. What's her name? Katara. 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 I was right. trying to say Cora. I'm just like, no, no, that's that's the wrong one. <laughs> I wrong know guy. that's not the right one. Okay. Mm. All right. So Kitten and Chris are invited to a fancy fa- a fancy ball, and a fancy fall. because because Brandon <laughs> likes writing about balls. And Anyway, that was not that came out different than intended. Brandon <laughs> likes writing about fancy parties. Um, <laughs> so I was going to say uh, nothing, but now that we're here, shame on you, Bill. <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah, so before they go to the party, though, they there's the look at each other. Where's the? Apparently, there's tribute money that's also been paid to the DM for years. But since the DM never has to spend any money for anything, where'd the money go? Mm-hmm. And they don't find a lot of it. They find some, but not nearly enough. And right? it's like it's like one of those pauses where they look at each other. Where's the money? Screen goes black. Commercial break. Mm-hmm. And then they come. Back. And they're just like finding money in random spots. Like eight hundred lakh here and. <laughs> 500 there. It's one of these things. It's like, okay, mm. this is this is a decent amount of cash. Mm. This isn't, holy crap, we are so in debt that, you know, right. we're not worried about debt collectors. We're worried about headhunters. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, now, in the meantime, Chris starts uh, experimenting with sand. And mm-hmm. we get a little bit of uh, Brandon explaining how the science behind the magic where apparently the magic sand has a lichen that grows the, after it's been digested by the sandlings. Is that Yeah, how it that's works? what it seems like she says, but it doesn't seem like that's what we found out from reading a word of Brandon or something else in another well, place. Well, she notices like a lichen, and Brandon's word of Brandon was like there's organisms. Oh, there's organisms that, that, that absorb the sunlight. 
the, so I'm guessing that yeah. that's what happens through the sand, like when it goes okay. through the sandling's digestive tract. It must be some kind of gut bacteria equivalent that they yeah, have. Something like that. Yeah. Um, and then Ash goes, she visits her family and she does her, her religious ritual. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, and tells them to get out of town because she's like, because there's basically a death threat on you. Things, so. things are about yeah. to go down. So. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, they go to the ball. Okay, so it says that Kitten changed out of his robes. Like, Chris comments on it. I don't see any difference. So so the only <laughs> things that I could see was before he had a hood. He doesn't have a hood. Okay. He doesn't have the thick leather straps. And he has, like, something more like suspenders. Okay. Which looks more like what all the other Taisha wear. Or okay. at least the, the lady judge because to me, it looks so, almost exactly so it's the very, same. It's very slight in what the difference is. And I, I didn't look super close, but I looked a little bit once I saw your notes. And I was like, yeah. so it looks like he's wearing a really similar outfit. He's uh-huh. still got his like little tabard uh-huh. thing that, you know, that's showing his, his rank sash. and stuff like that. His, his sash. But yeah, but it hangs down. So I don't know what else to call it. It feels they, like they, a tabard. They, they call it a sash. Call it a sash. Anyway, so he still has that thing. I mean, and his clothes are close, but they're uh-huh. just, they're a little bit different. But yeah, yeah it, it doesn't look drastically different. There, there's enough of a commentary, you know, he's just like, oh, wow, you changed. It looks nice. I'm just like, it looks the same. <laughs> <laughs> he has one look. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just, I, yeah. I'm not taking crazy pills. He only has one look. I guess the cosplayer me is like, okay, figure out the outfit. You got to figure out this part and that part mm-hmm. and the other thing. And so I, I looked a little bit. Yeah. But. So then they show up at the ball and... Uh, what's his name? The Lord Admiral He's pledges his drunk. support publicly, <laughs> very drunkenly, and then passes out immediately. And like then the right art style changes. So mm-hmm. maybe the art style change means that this is all a drunken hallucination <laughs> by the Lord uh, Admiral. And no, no. All right. Probably not. I think the important part here is that whenever you're looking for political support, Try your best not to use the drunk guy. <laughs> oh come on! <laughs> it's fun. Just your, get it in your writing. best. Like I didn't say like a hundred percent. We have to abandon this. Right. Just saying, you know, maybe not the drunk guy next time. Right. So, uh, what are the names? Kenton and Chris go sit by the the fountain. They have sort of a moment. I feel like. Yeah. And uh, uh, Chris proposes the possibility of her learning how to master sand. And Kitten's just like, no, only certain nope. people can do this. It's a it's a genetic thing. And, you know, it's it's you're part of your group. And, and once mm-hmm. you're in the group, it's very in, in exclusive. Like, and he's trying well, but, to not. But he's also saying it's not just a cultural thing. He's saying mm-hmm. this is like a biological thing or a genetic thing. And it was just like, no, weird... that sounds dumb. It was sort of a weird thing for him to say, though, when after he's had his whole thing where he's like, well, wait a minute. I think they were lying to us about overmastering. Right. But at the same time, you know, this is something that has been he's been told his entire life. And Mm -hmm. he and there's also the concern that maybe the reason none of his older brothers were able to master sand is because they were half dark side and he's particularly weak. So I can understand him still thinking there's a genetic component to this. Well, that, and I mean, if you looked at it, you don't see anybody else sand mastering outside of mm-hmm. their group. But it, and it, but again, it is something that they have to, they have to work out to really do learn, much with so. it at first. Yeah. And so Chris, of course, is the kind who she likes to push boundaries and, see what she can do. Mm-hmm. And so she wants to, but the, the, the kind of drops and they end up going, end up leaving the party. Now it confused me for a second because, you know, they left after the party and it's still bright daylight. And after a, a little while I was like, Oh, right. Day side. So <laughs> it doesn't get dark. <laughs> right. So it's always light out. And then there's a, uh, an event and Oh my gosh, guys, trail shows up. Trail! Who you know, is Trell? <laughs> apparently, he is a bald guy. And when you ask Brandon, he's just like, well, it depends on who you ask. I mean, maybe it's one of the, the gods that that Seiza was telling people about. Or maybe it's just some nondescript bald guy on 
Child Zane. Or maybe, and it's just like, is it the same guy, Brandon? Stop being <laughs> coy. <laughs> or maybe it's the origin of this really, really creepy black and red metal that possesses people. Mm. No one knows. And so, yeah, all I know is that uh, I heard that Trell shows up in this book beforehand, and I'm like, ooh, I can't wait to see that. <laughs> and then I saw it, and then I'm just like, you're hmm. even more confused than you were. Yep. So, this was the big deal I was building up to, huh, people? Well, mm. and the thing that's interesting is that it's a full page image where he shows yeah. up. And he well, says, what he is your name? name. He Trell, says his name. Trell, sir. And it's just like, da 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 Like, it, it's like, clear that it's meant it to be a big deal. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And, like, I can imagine as soon as this gets published, Brandon just sort of leaning back in his chair and giggling because he's like, <laughs> this is going to tick them off so bad. <laughs> but this is the thing. It doesn't really tick me off for cool reasons. Like, a lot of his reveals, it's just like. Right. So he has the same name. I. Why yeah. is that significant? I know, because it's it's um. it's a trail troll. Brandon's trailing everybody. I mean, trolling everybody. I feel like I'm supposed to be getting. It's the co- it's the it's the Cosmere equivalent of roof no, rolling. No, just tra- trail and troll sound alike. So. Oh, okay. I, <laughs> I was See, worried when you, ex- was worried. when you explain the joke, it gets funnier. It does. It's, uh, In fact, that was such a good... Tell it again. <laughs> no. Oh. So, so anyway, yeah, we meet Trell and keep making it. are back. all very, very, very confused. And then Chris confronts Bayon. Because earlier, Akron had suggested that Bayon may have killed Captain Daryl. And so she's like, okay, we got to get this out in the open. She mm. asks him and he says yes. And then he leaves. And she says, were you sent by the dynasty? He says, yes. Okay, and it may be, am I the only person who is super confused by this? What, the dynasty, which they've never mentioned before in the book? Well, they, they'd mentioned that they're part they? of the dynasty, but I okay. didn't. And that they, because they tightly they... controlled the technology. But uh-huh. my understanding was that, well, aren't you from the dynasty too? Or... Well, I, th- yeah. I get the feeling that she she is by blood part of the dynasty, but she is a, kind of a rebel. Yeah. Especially because she's she's come to Dayside and I don't think they really right. sponsored that or wanted her doing that, especially since they sent Bayon to kind of stop her from running into the okay. Sandmasters. I suspect so part three is going to have... Yeah. I suspect part three is going to have uh, uh, some political intrigue going on in the background. Oh, there, yeah, there was, there was sort so. of political stuff going on in this one too. Yeah. But it was other things as well. Yeah. Yeah, I was but just yeah, missing... And, it's just one of these things of like, this feels like an important reveal. I well, think, why then, do I feel like I'm missing yeah, something? Yeah, I think I picked up more on... Because it was my third time reading the first one and my second time reading the second one. Mm-hmm. So I was able to focus more on little things and go, oh, wait, there was that other connection. And, and then it's sort of jarring. She's like, okay, I need to talk to Kenton. She goes and talks to him. She says, you need to teach me to be a sandmaster and see. <laughs> and that's the end of the book. But it, it was just, it just felt kind of... You know, just, She's didn't confronting feel like- Bayon. She's going through this feeling of betrayal. She realizes that Bayon could have killed her at any point, but he didn't. So apparently she's worried that the dynasty is trying to kill her. And then she's like, all right, you got to teach me Sandmaster. And it just felt kind of weird. It feels like to me that she's going, well, if that crazy thing happened. Now I need mm-hmm. to try and take care of this problem. This goal I need to- that I've been, I need to make progress on something. I need a way to defend myself. Well, that too. Yeah. But it as well. Because if Bayon was sent and he didn't kill her, maybe something's going on there. But mm-hmm. also, if he was sent by the dynasty, there may be other assassins trying to kill her. And is if how, she can that's be a how I answer inter- then. Yeah, well, I could that's I could see I it both ways it. too. And so, yeah. But yeah, so uh, what are yeah. your thoughts? I did. I did like all the growth that Kenton and Chris both had. In that, there was there was some good growth. Like yeah. when he came out and apologized to mm-hmm. Ash at the beginning, I thought that was a cool growth moment because he's like, yeah. I can't be this person. And, and I mean, and he, knew that she, I he knew she still wouldn't like him, but he mm-hmm. still did it just because it was the right thing to do. Not even that, oh, I'm going to win her over. It was, mm-hmm. I need to do the right thing. Well, there's the whole concept of everybody hates the DM because they're so aloof f- and standoffish. 
we have to change. Yeah, and that was as survive. part of the whole the whole Trell thing is he's he's helping people, and they're like, oh no, we're, we're sorry for inconveniencing you with our people being trapped under a building here. Uh-huh. And he's going, no, I'm going to try and help your people. Well, to the point and, where he dehydrates himself and is very, mm-hmm. you know, like, so he he puts some effort into it, and suddenly, yeah, he's trying to build some goodwill. Yeah, and it seems like it goes, it helps for sure, because mm-hmm. that would be a big event to see that he helps save these people from this building and. Sam Masters never do anything mm-hmm. to help people out. And then here he is doing that. Exactly. So, And he's going to pay the cab driver, too. Yep. <laughs> he's like, no, I'm going to pay you. And they're like, oh, thank goodness for that. <laughs> yeah. So any other thoughts before we move on? Um, it's one of these things where I don't really know what to expect because I don't feel like I have the depth that I normally have. And so mm-hmm. in some ways, it's interesting because it's I, I'm... I'm playing with a deck of cards, and but I didn't know that there's jack, queens, and kings in it. So when it stopped being numbers, I'm going to be thrown for a loop. Uh huh. Mm. Because I'm like, oh, I, I, okay, I didn't know that this was part of the game. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, so where does J fall in comparison to, you know, two through ten? And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. So. This is this is uh, volume two. Volume three hasn't been released yet, but and apparently we're not sure exactly. <laughs> There's been a lot of changes when it uh, coming around. The the date the release date has changed a few times. So it's so you it's want me officially, to say? Well, it's officially set. The hardback is supposed to come out in Sep- September. September tenth, I think. Yeah, September tenth. But I think the digital version is supposed to still come out on July third. That's what it mm-hmm. says on Amazon. Who knows? Because, again, these numbers have changed. So we're hoping that it comes out on the 3rd and we'll discuss it in our next episode. If the digital version hasn't come out by then, I think we're just going to go ahead and move straight into Oathbringer. (laughs) Just part one. Just part one. Yeah. So we're going to have to. So or do we want to do aluminum hat? Oh, yeah, that's right. We could do it because I I, I was planning on more time. Well, no. So the thing we were discussing um, with. Uh, Oathbringer, Oathbringer and this is something where Bill and I live with each other so it's a bit easier for us so and you yeah. have conversations then I'm like what yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> the idea we were proposing is because Oathbringer is a bit of a bigger can of worms than mm-hmm. the first two books we were actually going to approach it it's yeah it's not as neatly organized by the characters there's a lot more overlap between the characters in yeah. it as well we were thinking okay. of actually just breaking it down into its five sections And having five episodes? Yeah. Technically six, actually. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing. Look, let's face it. We could do a show for an entire year about Oathbringer (laughs) alone. (laughs) The book is filled with so much depth of concept in episodes and worlds. And if you drop the thing, it'll kill at least seven different breeds of dog. And Mm, it is a thick book. Oh, okay. Oh. The book. I was really confused about <laughs> dropping and killing dogs. I was like, what dogs are you killing, Jordan? This is worrisome. You didn't pick up on the subtext? <laughs> no, you're not allowed near my dog. <laughs> Whatever, your dog loves uh, me. I play catch. Yeah, sh- yeah, if you bring her a ball, she is your best friend forever. This is true. Ever All right, so ever. basically, the next episode, we are <laughs> either going to be discussing um, part three, if it's out, or we'll do our aluminum foil hat theory. Uh, episode okay. so where we're it, it's, it's going to be a mailbag episode so guys please write in we want questions to answer we want topics to discuss and we want it to come from y'all i, I so, myself am really hoping it comes out just because this will be the first time we've ever gotten to three. do something i do where, too where right after it released yeah mm-hmm. yeah i agree um, and i don't know I'm, i just kind of want to have that experience and Get mm-hmm. to react mm-hmm. sort of with the community itself. Yeah. Absolutely. To which I don't know what happens when the next Stormlight comes out, mm-hmm. but uh, <laughs> that's going to look a little weird oh, and different. That'll be that'll be fun. We'll have that's to set some policies <laughs> when yeah. that thing comes out. Oh man, that's going to be so hard for me. <laughs> I'm going to have right, to get so, the audio. Okay, we've been going pretty long, so we want to start wrapping up. But before we close everything up, guys, it's time to announce the winner for our most recent giveaway. Did you have it ready, Jordan, or do you need me to do it? No, I, I am, of course, ready at all times. Hey, I uh, sent you a message. 
Because <laughs> I actually have the website up, so I could do it if you give me the number. Oh, uh, what's the number? The number is, I believe it's 31. Okay. Do you want to do it, George? Do you want me to? I already got yep, it up. 31. All right. Fine. And I hit the magic number button. 25. Okay, 25. But before we announce, just as a reminder, this is the prize. It's a copy of Legion, The Many Lives of Stephen Leeds, which is an omnibus of the three shorter novellas for the Legion series. If you've only and read the Cosmere, these are very good books. They're outside mm -hmm. the Cosmere, but very unique I, concept. I'm still yeah. hoping for an eventual TV series. Mm -hmm. so, and there's actually it would be a fairly an, like, decent shot. Yep. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so you said 25. Mm -hmm. The winner is Joshua P., one of our patrons. So congratulations. We will reach out to you and uh, let you know and get your contact information so that we can get it sent out to you. So thanks for listening. And a special thanks again to the Brandon Sanderson online store at store.brandonsanderson.com. Go there, check out all the amazing Cosmere related and non Cosmere related goodies he's got. He's got some really, really cool stuff there. Mm. Like it's not just, hey, it's a book. Yeah, he has posters and shirts and yeah. I got jewelry. You. I got, and I got also... three of the posters from that store. Yeah, although that wasn't the plan. My sister asked uh, Bill for a gift idea for me, and Bill sent her like, "Oh, one of these posters would be good." She misunderstood and bought me all three. <laughs> <laughs> and so suddenly, I had a lot more decorations than I was planning on. And so, yep. things are looking yep. really nice in my bedroom. I enjoy it. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, thanks again for listening. Thanks to all of our patrons. As always, uh, we want to thank our patrons who make it possible for us to keep creating the show. The, uh, the show, of course, will continue to be free for everybody. But if you want to support us, you know, drop us a couple bucks per episode. Head over to patreon.com slash Cosmere Studies. By becoming a patron, you will get immediate access to our Discord channel where we have a group of crazy Cosmere loving individuals who just keep us smiling mm -hmm. um now to make sure that happens you will need to connect your discord account with your patreon account just to make sure that you get the the invite um in that confirmation email on discord you can continue the discussion about the cosmere but we also have discussions about everything else under the sun so yeah also. a lot of prequel us. memes <laughs> <sighs> yes yes there are prequel memes the thing yes, is, I, I'm, actually, I'm actually memes. not that into prequel <laughs> memes. It's just that Bill one time said no, and thus I had to. And, <laughs> and so everybody's coming. I'm just like, I don't really even care that much about him. But, <laughs> but now you have to. So. But you sounded yeah. like you had a slight opinion about it. And so, and so it's been just, it's been determined that this is what will be done to rebel against Bill's yes, wishes. <laughs> it's basically now Bill is anti-fun and just so it has to be so stopped. So don't tell anybody. I act like it bothers me so that they keep trying to rebel doing this when it doesn't really bug me <laughs> rather than other ways. Yeah, I'm sure no one on it's our public secret. Discord will ever hear this. None of our okay. patrons ever listen to the show, it, right? Yeah, <laughs> pretty sure that's right. I don't think our patrons care about our show. Wait a minute, something doesn't sound right about that. You didn't hear anything. Oh, speaking of, sorry. But this week we do want to give a special thanks to our newest patrons, Kenneth M. and Ginny H. Y'all are awesome. We appreciate mm -hmm. it. So thank you for uh, for following, for being patrons. And of course, to all of our current and past patrons, once again, thank you. Y'all are great. Yes. We are gearing up for our aluminum foil hat theory episode either in two weeks or four weeks. And we want your questions. So please... Right in. Let us know what you want. Let us know any ideas you have about the Cosmere or topics that you just think, ooh, I want them to talk about this a little bit. L look into it and explain it or just discuss it more. Pontificate upon it, if you will. Pontificate is such a good I word. Haven't, Pontificate I haven't heard that word in a long time. Pontificate is such a good word. I don't get to use but those anyway, words. So send us your theories, your thoughts, anything that you want. Even just feedback on the show, things that you like. Uh, go ahead and write us at Cosmere studies at gmail.com. We would love to hear you mm -hmm. now outside of the show. We've each got our own personal projects. Jordan, what do you got going on right now? 
Um, I actually just announced uh, I'm at, with uh, another person who's big into the amiibo scene. We're launching the Professional Amiibo League. Professional in that uh, these are people who are really good at it, not that we're all suddenly going to get paid for being able to do it. So this is the Hardcore League. Yeah, but uh, Hardcore League d- just spells like Hakral, whereas this is uh, Pal, and thus it spells something. Therefore, it's just better. So if you're into Amiibos at all, be a pal. Join up. You can find us at twitch.tv slash splice stream. Um, also, if you're into the fact that the new Mario Maker game's coming out, I'm going to be st- probably streaming that in the next uh, few weeks as well because I, too, like Mario and the making of it. The making thereof. Mm. That would have been a better phrase. Can I get a do-over? <laughs> Done. Okay. Oh. <laughs> we'll fix it in post. Oh, okay. Promise. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> and Amy, oh, where, where can they find you? Did you Twitch, twitch.tv yeah. slash splice stream, or uh, you can find me on Twitter at splice stream. Cool. And Amy, how about you? Um, I'm on Facebook at coincidence cosplay and props on Instagram at coincidence underscore cosplay and on Twitter at coincidence cosp because my name is too long. Um, One of these days she's not going to explain That's it. my tagline. I got to do it. Um, no, I, I've been kind of a bum recently because my kids are out of school. And so they are like, Mom, we need to do things. And then my yard's like, we need to do stuff. So I haven't been doing as much. Um, but I finished my Queen Eleanor. I need to touch up the wig and fix the crown slightly. Um, and so hopefully I'll have better pictures of it soon. But otherwise, I am made most of a D20 today for uh, another random customer. And nice. I'm, I think what I'm going to be doing is I'm not going to finish my Nazgul right now just because I'm not feeling it. And I'm going to try and spend the next forever making my crazy Nyrene Condros costume from Mass Effect 3. Nice. And then I'm going to try and enter nice. it not this September, but next September in the, in the Fanex contest. So cool. we'll see how that goes. Very cool. As for myself, uh, I write board game reviews and post on social media about board games. You can find that at www.innkeeperstable.com. And on social media, you can find me at at Innkeeper's Table on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For those of you who, you know, can't uh, become patrons just yet, or even if you have become a patron, head over to iTunes Give us a, a good review if you like what we've been doing and just help us to spread the word about the podcast, let other people know, and just help, help to grow the community. Um, we've already done our final thoughts, so let's just uh, go on with the outro, I guess. In addition to the live episodes of the show that stream on twitch.tv slash Innkeeper's Table every two weeks on Monday nights at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern, our listeners can find videos of each episode on youtube or audio versions of the podcast on itunes spotify wherever else you listen to podcasts just do a search for cosmere studies you can also follow us and contact us through twitter instagram and facebook each of those profiles is at cosmere studies for our next episode we're going to continue our discussion of white sand moving into volume two or volume three hopefully if not (laughs) volume three then we're doing our Aluminum foil hat theories. It depends on when things are released. That's all up in the air. I'm really hoping it's volume three because as Jordan said, I want to do that shortly after it comes out because Mm. it's It's just nice to be current. But uh, join us for the live stream for that on Twitch on July 8th, 2019. In the meantime, though, on behalf of Amy, Jordan, and myself, thanks for listening. And remember, there's there's always always another another secret. secret.